Okay, good afternoon. We're going to go ahead and start with the Health Committee hearing today. I'd like to note for the record that uh, item number six, Senate Bill 1273, has been withdrawn by the author from today's hearing. Uh, there are some bills that are proposed for consent, but since we don't have a quorum, we won't be able to address that. But I will tell you what those bills are at this point. Uh, so at this point, item number two, Senate Bill 514, Anderson. Senate, uh, item number five, Senate Bill 1067, Huff. Item number seven, 1466, Mitchell. Item number eight, 1477, the Health Committee. Uh, and number nine, SCR 117, Pan. Those are all proposed for consent. Uh, so we'll wait for a quorum before we can move on those items. Um, I'm sorry, and excuse me, on, on number five, uh, 1067 is help with a technical amendment. So I want to make that very clear. So thank you. Thank you very much uh, on that. Uh, so we will be hearing uh, three bills today. Um, we will hear two witnesses per side with a time limit of three minutes each. Additional witnesses will please will be asking to please only state your name and organization for the record and your position on the measure. So at this point, uh, I'd like to bring Senator Liu forward, have her come forward to present SB 123. Good afternoon and thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Members. I'm presenting SB 123 regarding our school-based Medi-Cal programs. And first, uh, I'd like to thank uh, Assemblymember Santiago, when he's not here, but I know he's a member of the committee, for being my principal co-author. In August of 2015, the state auditor released its assessments of California's operation and participation in federal programs supporting school-based health and mental health SB 123 begins the process of enacting the auditor's recommendations. The two primary programs covered in the audit and the bill are the School-Based Medi-Cal Administrative Activities Program, otherwise known as SMALL, and the Local Education Agency Billing Option Program, known as LEA Billing. The small program typically funds school nurses, psychologists, health aides, family resource centers, and other activities connecting families to Medi-Cal. The LEA billing program currently supports health services for special education students. In 2012, a federal audit found significant issues with the administration of the small program. Because of deficiencies in internal controls and program oversight by the California Department of Health Care Services, the federal government suspended funding statewide, which halted reimbursements to schools. I requested a state audit of the small and affiliated LEA billing program in 2014. Nonetheless, with a cumbersome filing process and the substantial delay in small reimbursements, large number of districts and charters entered the participation in this school-based Medi-Cal program. The state auditor found numerous deficiencies in the small program and called for an overhaul. The auditor had lesser concerns with the LEA billing program. In comparing California's operation of the programs to other states, the audit point at, pointed out several areas where our state was underperforming and could save millions of operational costs and significant school staff time at the local level. It also pointed to opportunities to increase participation, bringing in millions of additional federal funds. With some program changes negotiated between DHCS and the Federal Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services put into effect, California schools have finally begun to, re begun to receive a fraction of the funds owed. However, they still have not been fully reimbursed for services they provided under the program. Hundreds of school districts and charter schools are still owed $100 million. Improving school-based health services requires effective coordination between California health and education systems. Federal requirements call for an interagency agreement between the health and education agencies in the state to operate these programs. California does not have an interagency agreement in place. SB 123 will require development of an interagency agreement between the Department of Health and Education 
health Department of Education and Health Care Services to help ensure the collaboration is institutionalized and drives best practices at the state and local level. School districts contract with a third party, typically the county offices of education, for billing and reimbursement services. To provide more options and local control to districts and charter schools, SB 123 authorizes DH. CS to enable direct contracting with local education agencies with a small program. This would allow DHCS and the local education agencies to have a direct relationship similar to that of the LEA billing options program. SB 123 also creates a stakeholder school-based health program policy work group to provide input to DHCS and CDE from school administrators actively engaged in the operation of these programs. The work group will focus on the examination, examining the cost effectiveness, program structure, and operational effectiveness of our school-based health programs and how well they meet the needs of our schools and students at the local level. The bill develops an appeals process, increases transparency while requiring DHCS to post information on the cost of operating these programs, and to prepare an annual report for both programs that compares California's operations to those of other states. Improving school-based health services is a critical strategy to address the achievement gap in our schools and health and education equity issues in California. These vital programs must be operated at a level that meets the benchmark of national best practices in order to meet the needs of California's most vulnerable children. And I accept the Health Committee's amendments and have witnesses in support. I have Lisa Eisenberg uh, here with the school, California School-Based Health Alliance, and Jay Hansen, a Sacramento City, school, uh, City Unified Board member and Chief Strategy Officer for the California Medical Association. Great, thank you. Please, please go ahead. Great, thank you. Good afternoon, Chair and members. As Senator Liu mentioned, my name is Lisa Eisenberg. I work with the California School-Based Health Alliance, and we are here in strong support of SB 123. Uh, to improve the health and academic success of children and youth, I want to talk today about how important health services are in schools. I know many of you are supportive of health services. And I also want to speak to how critical these Medicaid funding dollars are um, to the health services being provided in schools. California ch children face significant health issues, and with more than 50% of California youth being enrolled in Medicaid, it's really important to utilize our schools in providing these health services. A couple of examples to illustrate the need. Even though about 9 out of 10 California children have health insurance, almost 20% of them did not have a recommended annual preventative medical visit in 2011. 16% of California children have at some point in their lives been diagnosed with asthma, and over 70% of children with a mental health diagnosis do not get treatment. And schools are at the front line for, of dealing with these health issues. Research shows that when students have access to health services on campus, they are more likely to receive consistent medical, behavioral, and dental care, have increased follow-up rates after screenings that identify health issues, and are less likely to go to the emergency room. The ESMA and LEA programs are critical to helping schools provide uh, resources for these services and coordination of health services. An example of how schools use these services is they hire nurses to respond to and refer to health conditions like asthma or diabetes. They uh, hire school counselors and mental health professionals and they invest in family resource specialists that can refer students and their families to community resources and health care services. As Senator Liu mentioned, the recent audit illustrated and made some important recommendations to how we can change the, particularly the SMA program, but coordinate both these school Medicaid funding streams. I am encouraged and optimistic that the changes proposed in SB 123 will improve oversight and tension and coordination between health and education departments. Um, and I'm enthusiastic and offer our strong support for this bill. And I urge your I vote. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and members. My name is Jay Hansen. I'm the uh, vice president of the Sacramento School Board. And uh, my day job, my paying job, is Chief Strategy Officer at the California Medical Association. 
So uh, this legislation really cl hits close to home. We've had several years of really extensive problems <clears throat> trying to coordinate this program at our school district. We take full advantage of the opportunity to match uh, up to 50% of the cost of enrolling our students in our district in the Medi-Cal programs and being able to have access to the really critical programs that are provided there. In the state of California, there are 6.2 million students, 50% of them are Title I, which means that 50%, 3.1 million are eligible to be enrolled in the Medi-Cal program. And then you add in the up to 175,000 undocumented students that are recently added into the Medi-Cal program, and schools really are becoming kind of the one-stop place for students. You know, we're providing 50,000 meals a day at, at my school district, uh, but we're also doing a lot of health care services. This bill really helps streamline the process. DHCS, through really no fault of their own, uh, is really not the best place to help coordinate all of this different work, and they need to have the assistance of the CDE and have you know the work-based group that they put together has been really a big, big plus on helping this happen. Uh, the complexities of the school districts and education mirror the complexities in healthcare. So you put those two together, and you've really got a tough, tough system. This bill really goes a long ways towards knitting those worlds together. And I think it'll do a great service to our students and would urge your support today. Thank you. Others in support? Mr. Chair, Tony Chigaro, on behalf of the 325,000 teachers in the California, we support this bill and urge the committee to support. Thank you. Thank you. Others? Uh, Enrique Roach on behalf of the Los Angeles Unified School District. Uh, missing from the committee amendments is the language clarifying that LAUSD will operate its, its own RMTS system. We support the bill, we support the direction of the amendments, but just ask to include that as a part of the committee amendments as well. Thank you. Thank you. Helen Roth Dowden, Teachers for Healthy Kids, in support. Thank you. Any others in support? Uh, opposition, please come forward if you'd like to speak. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, Jeff Frost, representing the Orange County and Madera County Offices of Education. Um, both of uh, these county offices are local education consortiums, or LECs. Um, our opposition had been to the, I guess now, previous version of the bill, um, where a number of very significant policy changes were made related to uh, both oversight of the program and funding. Um, we are still reviewing the sections that remain. We think for the most part they are positive. Um, we hope to be able to uh, completely remove our opposition by the next hearing. So I wanted to thank the author and particularly the committee staff for their work. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Michael Hulsizer on behalf of the Kern County Superintendent of Schools. We also want to thank uh, staff in particular for their hard work, her hard work on this bill, and we appreciate uh, Senator Lewis uh, accepting those amendments, and we look forward to seeing uh, the language in print. Thank you very much. Sandra Morales with the County Superintendents Association. To make this brief, I'd like to echo the comments that have been made by my two colleagues, um, expressing our appreciation to the staff as well as Senator Lou and your staff in addressing our concerns. And we look forward to continuing working with you as the bill moves forward. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Others in opposition? Anyone else? Seeing none, we'll bring it back to the committee for questions. Mr. Thurman. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the Senator uh, for bringing this forward. You know, I worked with so many school districts for whom these services are critical. Um, one of the few dollars that you can actually pursue if you do the work to educate folks about health and talk about health and enroll people in health programs, yet so many of our districts have lost so much money because of problems in the process and not always at the, uh, not always at the cause of the work of the district. And so I appreciate the bills uh, clarifying the processes so that that can get cleaned up. You know, I, I just want to ask, I, you know, we did hear from some superintendents 
who expressed concern about it and just wanted to get your sense about what their challenges are because as we read this I, to me this is creating opportunity for our school districts to get funding for services that will help students to learn once we address their needs is there anything else that we need to know and and have you had any conversations with dhcs that gives us a sense that they'll work closely with with you on implementing this in a way that will not create barriers for our districts but actually uh, do as you're intending to do create opportunities for their service we did accept amendments from the um, committee uh, dealing with streamlining some of these issues that you just uh, reiterated we hope that when those amendments uh, come together and everybody will be on board together that uh, we hope this whole process will be streamlined that school districts can indeed uh, recoup what is owed them Thanks. As it relates to the Department uh, of Healthcare Services, uh, you're well, we are working with them and and uh, trying to create a, a, an agreement between them and uh, the de uh, the Department of uh, Education. Thank you. I'll move the bill, Mr. Chair. Sorry, we don't have a quorum right quite yet, but thank I appreciate appreciate that, Mr. Chair. I'll move it in advance. Um, any anyone else? See the comments from the dais. Well, we we don't have a we don't have a quorum at this point, um, but I'd like to make a couple comments. First of all, I want to thank uh, thank you, Senator Lou, for your hard work uh, for the years of dedication for this to trying to resolve this challenging issue. So I share your goal of wanting to increase and improve healthcare services to, we provide to children in the school setting. Um, while the current school-based administrative activities billing program works for some school districts, there's still a lot of work to be done to make it a perfect system. Uh, all of our school districts are unique, and I have concerns about revamping the entire system without adequately assessing the impact on all of our districts and our smaller districts in particular. I want to thank you for accepting the amendments, and those amendments will be taken uh, in, in education, mm -hmm. which will be the next next hearing for this. So there's another stop for this this bill. Um, and let's see, uh, I believe that by permitting school districts to contract directly with DHCS for MAA services or allowing them to maintain their current billing system, and, and that is the crux for some of these districts, that they actually, they actually have a very efficient billing system, uh, school districts will be able to choose what works best for them. There's still some work to be done on the bill, and I look forward to continuing to work with the author and the education committee as it moves forward. So I will be recommending an aye when, when we have a quorum, um, So, but I'd like to give you an opportunity to close. Well, I just... It's been a long road, and we hope to correct some of the um, errors and hopefully the, uh, reimburse those districts that have performed the services that um, our students need. And um, I look forward to uh, continuing to work with you and simply ask for an aye vote when it comes out of this committee. Great. Great. Thank you very much. We'll, uh, we'll wait till we get enough people here to do that. So. Okay. Thank uh, you very much. Thank you very much, Senator. Um, Senator Nguyen. Do you come bearing treats? I would <laughs> had this bill been legal. Because <laughs> there aren't any rice cake right now being sold. Touche. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, members. Um, I, it's an honor for me to be here to present SB 969, which seeks to allow Vietnamese rice cakes to be sold at room temperature for up to 24 hours. Um, I also want to state that I do accept the, committee me, the committee's amendments, and I appreciate staff um, and the committee for helping us and assisting us. Uh, Vietnamese rice cakes follow a very traditional recipe that has been passed down for hundreds of years. Refrigeration or freezing of these rice cakes gives them a hockey puck cons consistency, rendering them inedible. Uh, this is also usually sold during Tet, which is a version of the Lunar New Year for the Vietnamese American community. And um, this bill has also received unanimous support in the Senate, and I respectfully ask for an aye vote. Uh, witnesses in support? Witnesses in opposition? Seeing none, we'll come bring it back to committee. Mr. Chu, it looks like you're ready to say something there. I'm just happy to move this delicious bill forward at the right time. <laughs> and this is not the right time. <laughs> but thank you very much. Um, any other questions from anyone? Seeing none, um, this, uh, when, when we have a quorum uh, recommendation, my chair's recommendation will be, to, will be an aye to move this forward. So, so uh, uh, keep watching. Thank you. Thanks, thank you, Senator. Senator Pavley, 